Now the battle's been raging online, in print, and on air, over the air, across our region uh, for more than a year now, probably closer to a couple of years. And the issue, access to the UPMC health system and whether Highmark subscribers are going to be able to continue to have it. Uh, the dispute was uh, sparked by Highmark's acquisition of the former West Penn Allegheny Health System, now called the Allegheny Health Network. Dan Honorado is Vice President of Corporate Communications and External Affairs with Highmark. Tom Fitzpatrick is Highmark's Vice President of Provider Contracting and Relations. And welcome. Good to have you both here. Glad to be here. All right, I'm going to roll the clock back a few years and the whole decision <laughs> uh, by Highmark to really get into the hospital business and create an integrated network. Uh, in, given the financial strait uh, of West Penn Allegheny at the time, I guess there could have been a different decision. Just let it kind of fold and see what happens. So why was it important to Highmark to create the kind of, uh, of system that you have today? Well, Bill, Highmark believes in, in choice and affordability, and we believe that the residents of Western Pennsylvania deserve access um, to low-cost, high-quality health care. And that was being threatened um, as the uh, financial uh, condition of West Penn Allegheny Health System um, was, 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 was going down that path. So Highmark, in an effort to preserve choice on the provider side, decided to intervene. So just a feeling, greater and greater concentration, we can say UPMC, given the, the scale of that organization, that in the long run that was not going to be the best possible outcome for, for, the, for the region? Yeah, I, I would say that's, that's, that's accurate because if uh, Allegheny uh, General and the West Penn Allegheny system would have gone under, uh, de facto UPMC would have increased their monopoly in the region by the percentage of beds that they have. Uh, as we talk about preserving choice, on the provider side and making sure that there's true competition, which is good for quality, good for cost. Uh, you want to make sure that the providers uh, are thriving and that you have healthy competition. It's the same reason why we're uh, fighting the battle now to have a contract to keep access and competition on the insurance side. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about that. Now, you do have your own hospital network now. Why does it remain important to, to have access to UPMC if you have your own hospital that, that you can have your subscribers go to? Well, if you look at it from the consumer's point of view, it's very important because the consumer uh, should have the choice. Uh, to make the decision who gets into a hospital, uh, the real issue here out of all the rhetoric that's out there is who should make that call? Should it be the integrated delivery system that sort of controls and operate the hospitals? Or should it be the consumer? We believe the consumer should be able to pick their health insurance, they should be able to pick their doctor, and they should be able to pick their hospital. That's who should make the decision. None of the entities, the, the integrated delivery system, should have the ability to pick and choose what insurance company is allowed into these buildings. There are buildings, they're nonprofits, they're tax exempt charitable assets that this community built and they should be open to all of the insurance companies. We're doing it with our hospitals, they're open to all insurance carriers and we think uh, UPMC should be doing the same thing. Isn't there some risk to that though? You could have your subscribers decide they're going to walk and they're going to go to the other hospital systems. Where does that leave the business model for your, your hospital network? But I think that that's true competition and as Dan had said, you know, we want to leave that decision up to members. And if we are providing the best value, and that is the best outcomes, the best patient experiences, then they'll choose us. And that's why you know, we're in the provider business now, and you know, we intend to compete on, in the provider business. Now, UPMC has contended that Highmark has a built-in interest here to keep patients away from them and to essentially divert patients into your hospital system. You're, you're uh, that's simply not true, and it's inaccurate, and uh, it's a lot of misinformation that's been out there. The fact is, we want a contract. If we truly were trying to divert people away from the UPMC system, not having a contract would do that right away because 100% of our members would be going to other hospitals. We want a contract because we believe that the competition will be better for quality, will be better for cost, and we're not afraid of the risk that you sort of referred to because we believe that competition, we're going to be providing a great quality at a very affordable cost and we'll take our chances in the open marketplace with open competition. The consumer wins, the region wins, the employers win. That's how we do this here. Yeah, uh, at the same time, UPMC says, yeah, we've got national insurers now moving into the market. This is really just about Highmark's market share and whether you guys can hang on to all your subscribers or not. I, I think the community has spoken. The community wants to put all of this arguing behind us and they want the two organizations to begin to work together like the rest of the country is and get together, collaborate, and come up with programs that truly lower the cost of health care in the region. And, and Bill, on that, on that issue right there, yes, there are national insurance companies that are currently allowed to get into UPMC facilities. 
But that's because UPMC decided they're allowed to get in. What happens five years from now? And they say to the national insurance carriers, oh, you're no longer allowed it. It shouldn't be up to the integrated delivery network making that call. All these insurance companies should be allowed in our hospitals, their hospitals, and all the community hospitals. If you want true competition, let the consumer decide what insurance company they want, what doctor they want, and what hospital they want. We shouldn't be dictating what insurance company gets into, into these hospitals. The consumer should be deciding that. Uh, only a few seconds left, but I guess we should make it clear. It's still one more year with the status quo, right? So everybody <laughs> that, make that clear. That, that, that's right, Bill. And, and there are other hospitals uh, that have already been deemed either through consent decrees or other rulings by, say, the Attorney General. So uh, places like Children's and Mercy and Bedford and Venango and Western Psych, those contracts continue uh, in the Children's case until 2022. Mercy until 2016. So members will continue to have access to UPMC facilities. We're just, we just want them to have access to all of the UPMC facilities. All right. Well, we'll, we'll watch how this unfolds very visibly and audibly throughout our region. Dan Honorado, Tom Fitzpatrick from Highmark. Thank you both so much. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Next up, the UPMC side of this thing. Stay with us.